He's not interested simply in music for his instrument, the piano. He's interested in music. He's interested in things, be, anything that relates to music as well. So I was impressed by the breadth of his knowledge about music, his thoughtfulness, his intriguing programming, putting things together that have some interesting angle, something that makes them go well together. Probably the best program I think I ever came up with was a program called 1911 for seven pieces of music that were all composed in a single year. So the idea being like, so you take any moment in time, any moment in any year, you look at the music from that particular year, that would give you a window into the past. You'd, you'd be able to, from listening to that music, you'd be able to get some glimmers of the music that led up to it. But equally, that single year, that little snapshot would be a, uh, a door into the future, too. His relationship to the audience has been very much one of sharing an experience together, mm -hmm. rather than, I'm going to play for you, you know, but we are sharing, and he gladly will talk to the audience. It's really my favorite piece on the program. It's by the Russian composer Igor Stravinsky, ballet music, dance music, called Three Scenes from his ballet, Petrushka. It takes place at a country fair, sort of a pre-Lent festival in Russia. And uh, the main character, Petrushka, in fact, the three main characters of the ballet are all puppets. So the first scene starts with this very invigorating music. I'll play you a little bit of it right now. beginning of the 20th century was an amazing time artistically and not just in music but in uh, you know in, in painting and literature and uh, well even in you know psychology and other non arts related fields and that program all really gave you a flavor of the time it showed how the time influenced the composers and you, you see the, the similarities and the differences how some of the pieces of music were really quite reflecting the romantic music that led up to it other pieces of music were very forward-looking and experimental i love that period and love the music from it by 1911 arnold Schoenberg was able to write as you hear in this piece of music some really revolutionary music and to me it's so interesting that in this time of revolution time of great social unrest where people were yelling their opinions at each other at the, you know, at the top of their lungs, that Schoenberg creates his revolutionary piece of music using soft sounds, using silence, using subtlety. And that's what you're going to hear. This is a piece of music that reminds me a lot of Oriental poetry, the sensitivity of Oriental painting. The first piece of the six small piano pieces begins. He instructs me to play it. Pianississimo, triple piano, very, very, very soft. And that really sets the tone. Silence, soft sounds are going to predominate in this music. The last piece, the sixth piece in the set, is so miniature. It's like, um, like I mentioned Oriental poetry. So think of a Japanese haiku with only 17 syllables. So this piece of music probably doesn't even have 17 notes in it. The last measure of this last piece in the set, he marks now quadruple soft, soft, very, 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 very soft. I'm supposed to play it. And over the last two notes, he writes, Wie ein Hauch, which is German for like a breath. As if maybe you're not even supposed to hear the actual pitches of the notes, but just some sort of an unconscious musical gesture. I'm really fascinated by the role of silence in music, the rest, and how they can highlight the notes that are before and after when you're not making a sound. It's really quite a lot to think about. Last time I heard him play was on my birthday. I had a significant birthday. I turned 60 and they had this fantastic 
um, party for me in which there were more than 200 and something students. I think about 13 of them played. And um, the idea was that they would, they would play something that they learned while they were with me. And Michael played Opus 19 of Schoenberg, which is one of my favorite pieces in the world, and um, which I taught him very early. I don't know how. I have no idea how I taught these pieces to him. They were very advanced and very complicated and, and a complete new system of notation and did these beautiful pieces, so beautiful. To his credit, the pieces had grown. And I thought, that's pretty wonderful. Because <laughs> yeah. he, he did some things that were really different in them too. The spacing of them was different, I thought. And the, the silence in the last one, um, which is in memoriam of Mahler, the last piece, which is about 12 measures or something long, I always felt that I spaced that with a lot of time, but now Michael has taken it further. I mean, he just stayed motionless for about what seemed to be three minutes before he just let go. It was wonderful. One of the really nice things about classical music concerts is that before you begin to play each piece, there's total silence. I love that moment when the audience is waiting. It can be a very nice waiting just to enjoy the silence, enjoy the anticipation, and then you begin the piece.